here and welcome back to another episode of DIY Patch Notes. This is a show where we make weird things for your house that are nerdy and geeky and video game related. And today we are doing another episode where we use foam board. So this is kind of like part two. It's a different use of the foam board. Instead of making a poster, we're going to make a scene. So I actually have mine completed and it's hanging on my wall right now. So this one was inspired by booze because they're awesome. And also because Halloween is coming up. So I thought this would be a cute little project to get done before Halloween for you guys. The materials I will be using in this DIY project is super glue. I use the Scotch brand. Two pieces of foam board, but this is optional. You can use just one if you want. This is the Elmer's brand. I used two so that I could double back my booze to make them stronger. That sounds weird, but that's what I did. Especially, you can see in the crown, um, you want to reinforce that if you're making a king boo. I used a black sharpie, and I used two different kinds. The one that you see here is the fine point. This is a normal sharpie. This is what I wrote my list out with. And then I used a sharpie pen, which is a fine point. This is much smaller. You can see that Right over here, I'm pointing to a line that I made with it. It's much thinner, but I use this for the smaller booze and the normal Sharpie for the bigger booze. One of the more important items that I used is workable fixative, not to be confused with final fixative. And this is because the main coloring that I use, the coloring technique, or the medium rather, is chalk pastels. And what happens is that the workable fixative just holds them in place because they smudge. So here you can see my chalk pastels. You don't want oil, you want chalk, so that when you rub it down, you can get this fine powder. Now as you can see here, I picked it up on my finger and I can smudge it. So you want to be able to smudge it, but then when you have it where you want it, you really want to use the workable fixative to keep it in place. Now if you're not using the chalk pastels, then you may not need the workable fixative. So I used black paint for the sides because I like painting the sides. I think it looks more polished when we're done. And then I used an X-Acto knife and I used the X-Acto knife to cut because I tried to use a scissor and it damages the foam board and it looks pretty terrible. So you really want an X-Acto knife and it has to be sharp so you get those nice clean edges to your booze. And here, this is optional. This is a red Prisma color. Um, I use this marker to create contrast with the pale pastels. It's a bright pop that looks nice for the boo. This is what I used on the King Boo's mouth. Um, but that's optional. You don't have to use Prismacolor. If you just have like a Crayola red, you can use that. Or you can just use chalk pastels. And here I have Final Fixative. This is also optional, but I used it to spray the booze when I was done to just seal them all together and, you know, keep it all together, yo. So let's get started. So to help with drawing the booze, I'm just using a bunch of different size plates that are from my kitchen. And I'm just tracing around them to get some perfect circles. I decided that the largest plate will be my king boo, so I left enough room for his crown on the upper left. So I just go back and I add detail to the different boos and I give them different facial expressions. So after you're done with your sketch, your next step is going to be the coloring. We are not going to cut out until we finish coloring our booze because I tried it both ways and it looks a lot nicer if you color before you cut. So all I'm doing on my little, you can see I have a little kind of scrap piece of paper with my booze on there that I wanted to draw. I am taking the chalk pastels and I'm scraping them against the paper and then I dip my finger into the pastels and I use it like a brush. Now, I'm sure you could actually use a brush, but I'm far too lazy and I didn't have one on hand, so I just used my hand. Have one on hand. <laughs> used my hand. That was pretty funny. Anyway, so I'm just mixing a bunch of different, because I had different blues in my set, 
I mixed a lot of light blue with teal and I used a little smidge of dark blue and I also added white and I mixed it all together and that's going to be my shadows for the boo. Now I really liked chalk pastel because it gives the boo the ghost like effect that I want and it's not harsh like if I used paint or if I used markers or something else. It looks very natural and it gives a very nice gradient effect. Now keep in mind I only used the blue for the bodies of the boos and then I used red with some white and some orange and that's what I'm using for the tongues. So the only things that I am actually coloring with the chalk is anything that is a tongue or is a body or um, blush because when you look at the boos they hide their face and they blush. So. I'm using a very kind of, I want to say watered down, but you know what I mean. It's very light. I'm using very little dust as opposed to the heart that you can see where I'm using a lot of dust. So as for the coloring itself, just make sure that you shade along with the shapes. As you can see, I'm doing the tongue right now and I'm just shading along it. And make sure you don't just use one color and you mix a few together because it looks a lot nicer when you mix the colors together instead of using what you get straight from the box. So once you're done with the chalk coloring, you're going to move on to the cutting step. And the very first thing that I do is cut out each boo individually because they're so much easier to handle having one boo at a time rather than a bunch of boos at once. That sounds weird, but uh, you kind of get the picture. They just make it so much easier to cut. So when you are cutting, make sure you are cutting on a surface that you don't mind if it gets damaged. I'm using an old sketchbook of mine that has like a leathery sort of material on the top and it has cardboard underneath the cover so that it doesn't cut through. Um, it does damage the sketchbook, but I don't really care about it. Uh, just make sure you're not cutting on your table or else your mother or father will have a fit. Since the boos are a simpler shape, I can usually in a few passes cleanly cut the foam board. Though sometimes I run into a little bit of an issue if I hit a kink in the foam board where it just seems like an irregularity inside of the foam where it makes it really difficult to cut and I don't know why. But as you can see, like a few passes and generally you'll get through it. And like I did in my previous poster, if I had any pieces sticking out, I would flip over the picture and then trim the backing of it. So if you want more tips on how to cut or you want to know how I cut, you can check out my Yoshi poster video, my DIY, and then you can figure out, because I do it a little bit more specifically and I, I zoom in and I show you how I do it. Um, when it's like a really detailed piece. But since these are simple shapes, it's a little bit easier to cut out than the Yoshi poster. You just gotta stick with it. This part's the worst. It only gets better from here on. Well, I actually kind of take that back because uh, the crown is actually the worst part. <laughs> so I only had a little bit of trouble doing the crown because there are three little circles on the top of his crown. And those are very difficult to cut because you don't want to damage the foam board, but it's hard to keep it in place without actually damaging it. Um, like if I held a piece down and I was cutting, it would still like pull on the, the circle. So you have to be very careful and make sure you cut thoroughly before you do anything. And with some patience, you'll, you'll have your king boo. <laughs> so the next step is if you mess up the crown like I kind of did, it's no matter because remember that second piece of foam board? Well, it's coming back. What we're going to do is just take our king boo and trace it onto the second piece of paper. We're going to adhere this second piece of foam board once we cut it out to the original colored boos. This will make the crown stronger and it won't break as easily. So for this example, I'm using a tiny little boo that I made and I already cut out the second piece with the X-Acto knife and I'm putting down super glue. Now I bought tiny little tubes because I didn't think I would need a lot of super glue. 
Um, but I ended up using all of the tiny little tubes in the packet that I bought. So you will need a bit of super glue to make sure that your pieces get stuck together um, well, or yeah, in, in a very nice manner. So you'll see I go through like a few tubes and by the time I get to King Boo, I'm like, I don't have any super glue left. So just make sure you have enough glue. More glue is better than less glue. <laughs> anyway, I did have enough glue so that I didn't have to go out and buy more, but it was pretty horrible. And after you glue it, if you're really concerned that it's not sticking together because the foam board is bent or misshapen at all, which I did have a few pieces that were bent, all you have to do is put a book on top of it, like a heavy book, after you glue it, and then it will get stuck together really easily. So next up, we're going to do the detailing on the booze. I use smaller markers depending on the size of the boo. If it's a bigger boo, like King Boo, I use bigger markers. But for the little boos, I mostly just stick with colored multi-liners. So you'll see here I have a little red Prisma color multi-liner, and that's what I'm using to color the back of the boo's mouth. Now, at first, I love this step. This is, like, really fun. But after you do so many boos, it's kind of like, oh my god, I need to get out of here. <laughs> But I had a lot of fun doing a few of these until it became stressful because <laughs> I just wanted to get it over with so I could make sure that my video was ready for Halloween. Anyway, this just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. Um, so just kind of work with it. You're just going to do line art on the faces uh, like you would normally do for any other picture that you would make. Afterwards, after doing the face, you're just going to go around with a larger Sharpie and do the outline around the boo. Now, you don't have to do this, but I like the way it looks with thin, like thick lines on the sides of it. Um, also, because I will be painting the sides black, I really like making the lines on the boo thick. I just think it makes it pop out more and it looks more interesting, especially from farther away or if you have a wall color that's similar to white, this step would be essential for you. Next up is King Boo and I'm just going to talk a little bit about King Boo and how he differs from a normal little boo. And that is simply, I'm just using larger markers and also the crown. So for the crown, I just used my Prismacolor markers that I happen to have with me um, from my childhood. So you could use any sort of marker. You could use Crayola. It doesn't even have to be a marker. You could just use the chalk pastels. Now, I like it when the red back part of the mouth is really red. So if you're just going to use chalk pastels, you want to make sure that it's really dense and you apply it thickly so that the tongue pops out and they don't look like they're the same color. Or that's probably not the proper word to use, but you know what I mean. You want the tongue to be more pink and you want the back of the mouth to be like a deeper, more vibrant red. Um, and the same goes with the crown. You really want the crown to pop out and the eyes and the rest is just the boo body. So it's kind of like just a creamy white. Now for the crown, I just, the way I color is I make a, I don't want to say horizontal. It's kind of like a slashing motion and I do that with the colors and I put different slashes of color in so I'll put some gold and then I'll put some lighter color and then I'll leave the white of the boo for the highlights so you'll see some white slashes of color going through the crown and that's going to be my highlights so I'm just leaving the white of the foam board now for the crystals it's a similar technique, except that I make sure that the darkest side or facet of the gem that's away from the light, that's the darkest color. Um, it's completely colored in. And then the two others that are not directly in the light, I'll have like a lighter color. And then the part that's in the light will be the whitest side of the facet of the gem. So I hope this makes sense to you. It's just kind of like basic coloring 
and I just wanted to explain it a little bit in case, you know, you don't really have any artistic experience or anything like that. It helps to make it look like it's a metal and it helps it look like it's a gem if you leave the white of the foam board in the coloring process. Other than that, this boo is pretty much the same as the rest of the boos. So we're just gonna move on to the next step. <laughs> so now that our boos are put together, we're just going to do one final step. And this is optional, but I really like this and I think it helps put together the pieces so that when you're looking at it on the wall, it helps them pop out more, especially if you put two pieces of foam board together and you backed your booze, it really helps them pop out. So I'm just going in here with black acrylic paint and I am coloring the sides of each boo. Now be very careful because these characters are white, so if you smear the black on them, which I did, uh, you're going to have a little bit of a dirty problem. <laughs> so it looks smudgy and it looks awful, but once it dried, I went back and I put some white paint or white gel pen over the smudged parts and that really helped make it look better. I also attempted, because I was wondering if I could, if I could take a damp cloth and wipe the paint off because if I were painting on a canvas, I could do that. But the foam board has paper on its surface, on top of the foam, so you really can't do that because it makes the paper pill on top of the foam board. So don't use any water to try to get the black paint off. You just have to let it dry and then go in and do damage control. Now, if you kind of like have a big thing or whatever, or it's close to the line and you want to kind of like smudge it like the excess off, that's a good idea. You can do that and it will make it like more of a gray color so it will be easier for the gel pen to cover instead of just like a really dark black. Um, but this step is pretty relaxing. Make sure you go into all of the crevices of the foam board because sometimes it doesn't cut perfectly and there are chunks missing. So you want to make sure that you get all of the paint into those crevices. This was also a relaxing step at first, but then it was the last step. So by the time I was, I was at this step, I was ready to just have my booze on my wall. So I was freaking out. <laughs> but after you do this, then there's just a few more steps to go. Um, I'll just go over that because I don't have any videos of me spraying the booze with the fixative, but this is the last step that I do before I go outside and I seal them with the fixative. Um, also, for the heart and the little bubbles, like the sweat bead sort of things, or I'm not sure what they're called, but you know, it's like the little panicky blue bubbles that I made. I just went over that with colored acrylic paint that I had because I didn't want them to be black. I thought they would be, you know, nicer if I switched it up and maybe just had the blue, the bleh, blues, <laughs> the booze with a black outline. So you'll see that um, I do end up painting all of the different booze and all of the hearts and the things like that with a color. So after using your final fixative to give the final seal, this is what we end up with. Now I was really, really happy with this. Um, how I adhered it to my wall was that I didn't want to use tacks and I didn't want to use anything that would destroy my wall. So I used a bunch of painter's tape, which is the blue tape that you can get in the store. Um, and I just used a ton of that and I stuck it on the back of my booze and I just stuck it on the wall. So it's more of a gentle tape than masking tape or or duct tape or anything like that so I would go with the blue painters tape and uh, yeah I made a little scene on my wall and the little beads of sweat and the little heart kind of pull it all together I think so thank you so much for joining me on another episode of DIY patch notes and I hope that you guys liked the project and I will be coming up with new projects in the future that don't involve foam board because can't stand it anymore. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys make because I would be super excited to see that. 
Anyway, I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll talk to you real soon. Bye!